in this year 2020 the year of the apocalypse and of the construction i wrote directed and filmed my first short film oh my god wow I had some time to reflect upon what things I don't want to be doing moving forward and some of the big lessons that I've learned and hopefully those lessons will help you guys too. So let's get started. First lesson is location, location, location. This film, I had a initial first location, which was my empty apartment. My lease ended up going out before the second day of shooting. And so I had to find a new location to shoot in. Because I had to find new locations for the second day of shooting, the amount of time that passed between day one and day two was months. So really not having that same place to film and locked down really destroys the consistency of filming. And what I found is that it kind of destroys some of the magic of keeping that momentum going with the actors and with the rest of the crew and really with motivation myself. Like I found that I was super excited to film the first day. And even though I was still really excited to shoot that second day, just because so many months had passed by, I just didn't feel as excited as the first day, you know? So the lesson is make sure that you have your locations booked and and ready to go for all the days of filming that you're going to be shooting. This kind of leads me into my next lesson, which is storyboarding. So I did storyboard beforehand when I had, you know, initially finished the script and it helped a lot. You know, I used resources like, like Shot Deck and Google Slides. They really helped me put my vision together. But I had put a storyboard together that was based off of this imaginary location in my head as opposed to using a real location. And though that helped me envision the framing, the composition of how the shots um, were going to look like, it really wasn't based off of a location that I had locked down. So what I had found is that after finding my locations, the storyboard ended up changing. So I would recommend storyboarding with a particular place in mind so that the day of shooting, you're not scrambling to fit this vision that you previously had at this imaginative place and try to fit it into this real location because that might not always work and you end up wasting not only your time but you know your actors and your crew their time as well it's time to stop uh, another lesson i learned is in the writing process when you're Putting your screenplay together, it's super important to be able to have people to bounce your ideas off of. You know, I initially had started writing the script in isolation, and though you think your ideas are fantastic, it isn't really until you start, you know, having peer reviews of your work by, you know, your friends or, you know, your significant others that really show you different ways that your script could be a lot better. So I would say if you have people in your life that you really trust, use them as a sounding board for your ideas and your story. You don't necessarily need to take all of their suggestions, but getting different viewpoints on how a structure of a story could be or ways different characters could use their dialogue, it, it is extremely helpful. And if it wasn't for my girlfriend co-writing this with me, honestly, the dialogue and the script would have turned out a lot worse than it is. So the next lesson is about rehearsal. I highly recommend that you rehearse as much as possible with your actors. I had made the mistake of not rehearsing because of scheduling conflicts. It was really hard to be able to get everybody's schedules to sync up and I just became lazy and decided that, oh, well, we'll just practice the day of or a couple days before. And it really ends up taking a huge chunk of time out of the days of filming. You basically end up spending so much time not only blocking your shots the day of filming, but actually learning the lines with your actors. And I think I think also to add to that, when you first get your actors on board, it's really important to make sure that they are committed to this project as much as you are. Of course, it can be really difficult to you know motivate actors that aren't being paid or crew members that aren't being paid, especially if this is your first short, you know, for this film, I didn't pay any of the actors. Give me your fucking money! It was important to be able to find people that really cared about not only the story, but cared about putting on a really good performance for their own portfolio and for their own reel, um, just as much as I cared about making this project happen. 
So the lesson here is to rehearse as much as possible before the days of filming so that the actors are comfortable with their lines, they're comfortable with their characters, and they're comfortable with each other so that those dynamics between actors is easygoing and flows um, in a way that can make those days of filming go by easy. Probably heard that audio is just as important as video, if not more important. Uh, and it's so important to be able to get you know clean audio and a lot of times in the film I had some challenges making sure that the audio was crisp and clear especially with the beginning car scene uh, let me show you what I'm talking about so if you look right here in the beginning car scene today is a good day let's just focus on you and me you see how there, there's that, there was that switch in that audio it's because I mean these are separate scenes filmed separately the audio was recorded separately and it was just a little challenging to be able to hook up the mics to, you know, the car and get their audios to sound all the same. And, you know, another challenge I had with that particular scene is there's so much car noise. And so that's definitely something that I'm going to make sure to be aware of if I ever shoot car scenes in the future. Or if there's any scenes with a lot of ambient noise in the background that to really separate that dialogue from the background noise. So the lesson there is really make sure that your audio is on point, that you know before your days of filming that you're maybe shooting those scenes on your own just to see how the audio would turn out. Um, that's one mistake that I made. I did do that, but I didn't really take into context all the different times I'd be shooting these scenes and how the audio differs from scene to scene. So it's something I'm learning and hopefully you know, my future projects don't have as bad of audio issues. So those are really the big lessons that I've learned, you know, shooting this film. And I'm sure there are a lot more. There are a lot more smaller lessons that I've learned. You know, for example, there was a couple scenes where uh, you could see the mic or you could see the wires of the mic. Uh, you could see one scene, my girlfriend, she had her phone up shooting a behind the scenes video and she was holding the boom mic. So those are things I could have removed in post, but... I honestly, I just didn't want to, you know, some other smaller lessons are just, you know, about writing, just being a better storyteller, you know, a lot of dialogue was a little fluffy and could have been more story oriented, making sure that it was moving the arc of the story more forward. So there were some of those lessons and, you know, if there's anything that you noticed in the movie, if you watched it, you know, please let me know. Please give me some cons constructive criticism because I, I'm always trying to improve and get better. So yeah, that's really it. Thank you for watching, guys, and see you in the next video. It's a wrap. Good job. Good job.